Alrighty, here we are. We've got our XC Hybrid 2080 Ti and our three slot MV Link Bridge from EVGA ready for an unboxing session followed by installation and playing around with uh, some benchmarks with our 9900K. So the first thing I'm seeing about this box compared to some of the other 2080 Ti's that I've opened before is that uh, the other ones are kind of split at this point. This one, it's just like they kind of made a picture of it, but you can't actually open the box there. Not that that really matters, probably anybody, but it's like, like they printed an image of it, but it actually just opens at the top, and the box is kind of fatter. The other ones are kind of wider, and I think it's because this one has the water cooler in it, and they probably had to fit it in there differently. Cat's talking to me. He's ornery. He's been fed already, and he seems to think he needs more. So, I'm going to open this bad boy up here. Working with one hand is always kind of a pain in the neck when you're trying to do this, so maybe what I'll do is, uh, maybe I should just set the damn phone down and <laughs> get like one little piece at a time here. Come on, you can do it. All right. Now, apparently I get a free copy of uh, Anthem and Battlefield 5 with this. I personally don't really care for uh, shooter games that much, but I probably will try Anthem at least. I am really messing up this box. Let me pause this one second and uh, and give this a go. Hold on. All right, so I got the box out of that external sleeve, and it's just a nice big box. Got like one little corner bent in. I don't really know what the purpose is of that other than for aesthetics, I guess. And it had a little connecting tape on there as well. So let's get this thing opened up. Nice big box. Yes. All right. And that's all you can see from the outside. Let's get this out of here. Oh, okay. It's kind of a two-layered thing. The card's up there and the water cooler's down here. And uh, for anybody who watched my last video where I installed the, um, the hybrid kit on my other 2080 Ti, I mean, this looks just like that, as you would expect, because uh, it's, you know, it's designed to basically convert one of their 2080 Ti's into this. So... Looks like it should look. Let's see what we got here. Got some accessories. This is another one of these HDMI to. Oh, this is an HDMI to DVI, I think. Yep, HDMI to DVI-D. And we've got some twist ties and zip ties and just basically cable management kind of stuff. And then some screws, which I'm sure are for mounting your radiator to whatever case you end up using. So that's all. Nice little little things here. I'm gonna pause one second and get this out of here. It's difficult to work with one hand. I'm holding like a like a gripping tripod thing for my phone uh, in one hand and trying to work with the other. It's a little difficult to to remove things from their containers. So one second. So we've got the things out of the box that we're gonna get out. I put the uh, screws and twist ties and stuff back in there because I already got multiple extras of things like that upstairs and don't really need it for installing this. So, uh, we've got the little plastic shroud on the card, which is pretty standard for protection. It's a pretty slick looking little card. It seems like this one might be a little bit more transparent than the other one. Well, maybe, maybe not. It just seems like I can see the pump in this one a little bit better than the other one, but maybe that's because my case is usually kind of dark. So that's going to be something to do with it. Stuff taken off here. Uh, there's a little bit left on the end there. Okay. So, pretty slick looking card. Fan. Completely silent. Can't hear it all. Of course, that's not really high RPM. But, uh, let's have a look at it here. You can see inside the same heat sinks and so forth that went into doing the other cards. So, clearly, these are all just using the same material. It's still the same kind of card and everything. Nothing really different. Got our MV Link connection up here pair of 8-pin power connections. Not sure what's up with this little thing right here. It's like a little piece of, see that white little plastic there? I'm not sure what's up with that. And this is GeForce RTX on it where the hybrid kit actually says like EVGA hybrid on it. So that's a difference uh, between the, the kit add-on and then the actual standalone card. And it says XC, which is fine. This is basically, I'm pretty sure this card has a 1635 megahertz core clock with the boost, but it'll probably, well, I think that's like when it's idle, it will sit like 1300 
and then when it boosts up, uh, it can go all the way up to usually like around 1935. But usually a lot of these, uh, especially ones with good cooling like this, will jump over 2000 megahertz pretty regularly. And it comes with a nice back plate like they all, like pretty much all these EVGA cards come with. But very nice looking card all, all told. Again, it comes with uh, pretty much a standard EVGA 120 millimeter fan and only one of them. So what I'll probably do is, uh, right now I've got two of those Corsair Maglev fans on the one card I have up in there. I'm doing a push-pull, and what I think I'll do is I'll switch one of those onto this and then use like the EVGA fans on the bottom to push air up, and then I'll put the Corsair fans on the top to pull air so you can see the RGB from outside of the case but still maintain a push-pull air configuration with both radiators. I think that'll be for the best. And then this little sleeve was in the case as well. I think it's just like, oh, there's like a case badge in there. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, I've gotten those with several of these. I haven't actually put anything on my case with that, but they're kind of nice. They're more like metallic. They have a definite kind of heft weight to them that uh, usually like a case bag or badge or sticker would not have. And this appears to be probably installation guide on various types of EVGA cards. You can see like they've got uh, different bracket sizes here depending on what card you went with so like the option four is like the ultra that I used to have uh, The three slot on there for example, so it's just an installation guide And then the last thing in the case is again <laughs> This is like the thing that came with my hybrid kit the other day that I got where it's like don't put the radiator on the bottom of the case and Blow air down that's bad. So example a is bad example e, B is good Although in my case I have them facing upward as instead of out the back of the case to just blow air directly up and away from things fairly quickly. It seems to be effective. Nothing else in our envelope. So I guess uh, that's it for the card. The next thing is going to be to open up this uh, this MV-Link bridge, which will probably not be as exciting, but they're kind of cool looking. So give me one second, we'll get that opened up here. All right, so here's our EVGA MV-Link bridge. Honestly, I don't know if I really care for the aesthetics of these so much. They look okay, but it just seems like they look kind of weird when you connect two of their cards together. I've seen other brands like... Um, Gigabyte's Aorus series. I think they look a little bit nicer. Um, Asus looks okay, but whatever. It's just a personal preference. But this is the three slot bridge. I have the four slot still upstairs from when I had my uh, previous motherboard, but that is, uh, like I say, doesn't work with my new layout with my MSI Meg Ace Z390 board. That is a three slot, so I'm going to need this one for it to connect the two cards. Not a whole lot really to look at here. You just got your to uh, they have like a longer section and then a small pin connection there, whereas uh, old SLI bridges used to be just like two of the same, so it was like slot, slot, you know, basically the same size. So nothing else really to go over here, but like I said, this is just how you connect your two cards. This provides enough bandwidth, so apparently, um, you know, like because this the CPU, the 9900K, has 16 PCI Express lanes. Versus like I had 64 on my Threadripper, which is an insane number by comparison. But that limits how many CPU, uh, how many lanes can be given to each video card. So running one by itself runs at 16x. And then you use uh, like four lanes provided from the, chi the Northbridge chipset to give uh, like an NVMe drive four lanes. So it'll run at its full bandwidth. But anything beyond that starts using more lanes from the CPU. And the CPU then has to... You, your card runs down at 8, and then the other lanes are given off to the other devices that you install. In this case, because I'll be running two GPUs, each will run at 8x. And that didn't used to be a problem until recently, but from what I understand, the 2080 Ti's are a fast enough card that they're actually using all eight lanes, and then a little bit more bandwidth is needed, uh, which is not enough to be, it can't be supplied by the PCI Express bus because it's ran out of bandwidth at that point. So this, though, is a fast enough connection that it makes up for uh, not getting any more bandwidth over the PCI Express bus. Instead, it, it gets whatever bandwidth left it needs over the bridge, and supposedly that pretty much eliminates any problems of running them at 8x, although supposedly you still lose just a tiny bit of performance from each card, like a, like maybe 1%, but overall they'll still run just about full bore even at 8x with this type of bridge as opposed to uh, old SLI bridges did not, even like the, the quote-unquote high bandwidth bridge that NVIDIA put out uh, for the 10 series cards, was quite a bit slower than this, and so this will make up for any bandwidth you've lost over the the PCI Express bus when running two cards in 8x a piece. Hopefully that made sense. 
But if it doesn't, uh, ask questions in the comments and I will try to answer them as best I can or find answers for you online. So, that said, I know this wasn't a very exciting unboxing here. GPU is sitting over there ready to go. All I'm going to have to do is take this stuff upstairs. i got to reattach uh, a couple power connections to the power supply because right now I've just got the pair in there that run to my one card and I'll need two more to connect the second GPU. And I'll get everything connected up here and we'll see... Uh, if it fires up, see how it looks, see how it runs, and run some benchmark tests like Fire Strike, uh, Time Spy, and there's the new Port Royal from 3D Mark that tests uh, ray tracing. So I do have a benchmark for ray tracing that we can do. So that'll give us a few things to play with. That said, I'll be back here in a few minutes. Be right back. All right, so I've got my first uh, GPU still in there. I've got the uh, radiator moved over a little bit because the second one I'm going to try to mount over there. And I've got my uh, dual 8-pin PCI Express power connections uh, added to the power supply so that they'll be ready for the new card. You can see this one, like I said, this is the one with the hybrid kit, and it says EVGA Hybrid right on the top of it. While the other one, which I'll put in there in a minute, says uh, like EVGA RTX or RTX GeForce or something like that. I'll put it back in there, we'll see here in a second. But they're different in their appearance, so I think that's sort of... I don't know why they did that. I think that's, that they should just both say EVGA hybrid, but whatever. They can do what they want, I guess. It's their stuff. But there's the uh, MVLink connection on there. And we're going to get the other card. Like I say, this is three slots. The old board I had, like the second PCI Express slot, was down here. So you had a little bit more space between them. Uh, but this one doesn't offer that, so we had to get a different bridge. But we're going to go ahead and get the second one in here in a second. Like I say, I've got the uh, standard EVGA fan that came with it. On the other side, blowing upward, and then I've got the uh, maglev fan from Corsair with the RGB lighting on top, so it'll be more visible from outside of the case, and you can see the lighting better. But give me one minute. Oh, Katie's here to help out again. He shouldn't really be this close to the computer, as other people have said before. Cats and static electricity and computers are a bad mix, but he likes to help. Anyways, I'll be back in a minute when I get that second card in there. Be right back. So something interesting, uh, as I was just mentioning a minute ago, like these, this is GeForce RTX. Well, that's what this is. You peel this off, and then they both, and it'll say, you know, hybrid, I think. See? So it's just a sticker that covers it for some reason. And I guess you could leave it on there if you only had the one card and you thought that this looked better for some reason. But, uh, I mean, this is where the RGB lighting works at, so I guess it's just like a protective thing that they put on there. Kind of weird, though, because it so well matches the surrounding black shrouding that it looked like it was part of the card. But it is not. So that's just a small caveat for those of you who purchased this. But that is actually, it does say the same thing as the other card. Cool. Putting it in the system. Alrighty. So we've got both cards in the system, as you can see. EVGA Hybrid, EVGA Hybrid. Got the two coolers up here mounted. Maglevs on top, regular fans on the bottom. This is the old four, uh, four slot bridge. And there's the three slot bridge. Just thought you'd like to see the. A comparison, pretty similar, of course. One's a lot of difference. Makes all the difference in the world if you get the wrong motherboard, or at least in this, not necessarily the wrong board, but you know, different one. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this to connect. All right. Everything is in place. Everything is hooked up. I can't imagine anything that I've screwed up, but you never know. There's always one way to find out. Pardon all the ratty wiring in there again. I got my fan controller in there for the extra fans and so forth. There's just not enough headers on the motherboard to support this many case fans, so we needed more. So uh, one day maybe I'll make an effort to clean that out, but I won't make any promises. <laughs> that said, give me a minute here. I'm going to set this thing back up on the uh, the desk over there where I removed it. And I will power it up, and we'll see if it works. Be right back. Alrighty, here's the moment of truth. I believe everything's hooked up. I can't think of anything that I haven't connected that I need right now anyway. See, there's not a ton of headroom between there, but it should be more than enough. And we're going to be pulling all of our air upward and blowing it out the top anyway, so see how it works. I may end up having to do like a driver reinstall or something after this. Sometimes when it switches from a, a single card running at 16 lanes to two running at 8 lanes, like, Windows won't detect them as the same devices anymore, and you'll have to redo your drivers. But we'll see what happens with it. So let's fire it up. Well, that's already 
That's kind of funny, they're different colors. The top one's purple, the bottom one's blue. I don't know how that's translating right now on the, uh, to the phone, and then the bridge is green for some reason. But once I get everything loaded up and I uh, set up and use LED sync and EVGA Precision X1, I should be able to get them to all run on the same color and transition at the same time if I want them to transition, that sort of thing. So give me a minute here, and I will check out uh, what's going on in the computer uh, over at my monitor and see if uh, everything's working correctly or if I'm going to have to reinstall drivers or whatever, because that may take a few minutes, and that would be boring for you. I don't want you to be bored. So give me a minute, and I'll be back. One week later. So I finally have SLI working. You can see that it is enabled, and we've got our two hybrid, hybridized cards working together, the XE2 Ultra with the hybrid kit, and then the standard uh, EVGA XE uh, hybrid card working together in SLI. Uh, this is over a week from when I started making this video because I was not able to get SLI working, and we had come to the conclusion that I'd received that bad SLI bridge, and actually what the problem was is MSI Mystic Light software that runs all the RGB in my system, if that program is installed and starting with Windows, it breaks SLI which is really a bummer because now I can't turn on the RGB on all of my lovely little uh, lights in my system. What I may end up doing is because you can kind of see over here it's just kind of dark in there. Uh, sort of a bummer having spent quite a bit of money on RGB fans. I mean I could have gotten cheaper fans, you know. Uh, not, maybe it's just this version of the MSI Mystic Light software. I'm hoping that like if they put out a future revi revision of that software maybe that's a, a bug that they'll have fixed at that point. But as of right now, uh, if I install that, I immediately start getting system hangs and different problems. But uh, most of those fans, I think, if not all of them, are run through... I have that Corsair Lightning Node Pro. And what I might do is just physically install... Like it has a little controller module you can, you can add on to it to manually control the lighting for it. So I should be able to at least light those fans back up and have them do something. It just won't be controllable through Windows, which is kind of a bummer because that was sort of the whole idea was to run them through the uh, the motherboard header. I kind of wonder, maybe that's what's causing the problem. Like I might try uninstalling uh, or, you know, disconnecting the Lightning Node Pro from the motherboard and see if maybe Mystic Light plus Lightning Node Pro plus SLI is a problem. I don't know. It's whatever. It's something to think about and play with. But suffice to say, it is finally actually working. So what I'm going to do today is show you guys a few benchmark results from this because even at stock, this is pretty fast. Um, like I say, I don't know about over, like I'll probably do a separate video for overclocking results, but we'll just go ahead and do um, a bit a video now showing like some, maybe like 3D Mark, Fire Strike, uh, Ultra, Time Spy, and I can do like Witcher 3 again. We can see how that runs. I don't know if uh, the OSD is going to work from... Uh, Precision X1, it's really flaky, so I may not be able to, I may have to run fraps or something to get a frame rate. I was hoping we could see temps and stuff within the game, so we'll have to see what happens. But uh, with two cards in there, it is running a little warmer than obviously with one card. Like, you can see they're idling like 27, which is still not bad, but they were, you know, like more like 24. The temperatures come up a little bit too in the weather, so that has an effect on the ambient room temperature. So they're not going to be quite as... Uh, it's cool running, but like I say, with two of them in the machine, you're going to have a little bit more heat. But uh, most of it, because of the way these are set up, of course, like other than like the the VRM fan that really just blows air out the back of the case, I mean, everything is routing up to the to the, the roof and blowing out the top, so it's not really uh, too much in the case that way, but there's still more than one card would have. So that said, let me go ahead and uh, run a few benchmarks, and we'll see uh, what kind of scores we get. So I'll be back in a minute. numbers now I'm looking at my core clocks and they're really low uh, but what I think that indicates is that the CPU one when not overclocked is not nearly fast enough to really push both these cards and so they're kind of down clocking because they're not really getting pushed hard enough to need to up to boost up to a, a higher speed but 
you can look at that frame rate. This is in 4K with everything turned up to max except for hair works, which I shut off because hair works uh, in SLI don't seem to work well together. And it's like his hair goes flying all over the place. It looks really strange and uh, it's kind of distracting. So I shut that off for the sake of uh getting it to quit doing that and and hair works is a big like frame rate hit in this game anyway for some reason so uh like i say you can see that the cards are only sitting around 42 degrees but there again that's probably because the clocks are not very high i think if they were pushed up into around 2000 maybe the cards would be getting into the high 40s or maybe like 50 degrees tops but still not bad cpu temp sitting at around 30s you know mid 30s to, to like 40 degrees but the frame rates are like in the have been over 160 in certain areas and this is witcher 3 again in 4k everything except for hair works turn up to max including anti-aliasing is running on max so that's pretty crazy frame rates of this for 4k if i could get uh one of those 4k 144 hertz panels i'd be able to really take advantage of uh that high frame rate and turn up you know turn everything up to full specs and actually have like, like that wonderful smooth experience that you can get at that high refresh rate but uh, that's running really well. Uh, the benchmarks I ran all seem to do pretty well. And that's a lot. And again, this is at stock. So if I went ahead and re-overclocked the processor back up to 5 gigahertz, part of the reason why I, uh, I, I had to reset the overclock was uh, I had to update the BIOS. When I was trying to figure out why SLI wasn't working, I had to do a bunch of different you know, troubleshooting steps. And one of them was seeing if there was a new motherboard BIOS that might be causing you know, like the problem. So I guess going forward, uh, what I might try to do is, like I say, take those... That RGB Pro, uh, what the hell is it? The Corsair Lightning Pro module, and connect it up to its own individual controller, and see if uh, you know that way I could at least light up the fans and still have SLI working. It's sort of a crappy half way to have to do a, a workaround to uh, keep your fans lit up and have SLI working at the same time. But until they put out a new version of Mystic Light, it appears that at least the current version is breaking my SLI. So uh, I think that's pretty good for today's video. If anybody has any questions or wants me to benchmark anything specific, I can try to do that. I might try to do, uh, I do have Battlefield 5 now because it came with the video card that I bought. And even though I'm not interested in playing the game itself, um, like on one GPU the other day I tried it, it like with 4K and everything turned on, max, including, uh, you know, ray tracing, it was like 21 frames a second, which is awful. Uh, if I enabled DLSS plus ray tracing, it was like 46 frames a second on a single card. I don't know if they've offered SLI support for that game yet or not. I guess we could try loading it up here real quick and see if it works, but they don't really have a benchmark or anything, so maybe, maybe I'll do it later. Um, like I say, I'll try to do a video on that. If I, I can see if they have a benchmark that can be ran, and then we can test uh, to verify um, you know, if SLI is compatible with that stuff yet or not. I don't know if SLI and ray tracing work together. I don't know if that game even supports SLI. Last time I checked, I don't believe that it did. But, again, I appreciate everybody watching the video. Sorry it took so long to get it out, but that was because we had all those problems getting SLI working. If you have any questions or if you want, like I said, me to, you want me to benchmark something specific, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, maybe if you don't don't mind, go ahead and throw the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And maybe tell me why in the comments and see if we can improve in the future. But I appreciate everybody watching the channel. And uh, have a great one. I'll see you guys again real soon when I do a, an overclocking video on this. Take care. Bye.